Hey there, welcome back to the Catholic History Show. My name is Brendan Lane, and I'm a former high school history and theology teacher. And today, I thought I'd talk about the Siege of Seville, which took place back in the middle of the 1200s. Uh, back when I was a teacher, one of my favorite topics to cover in class with the students was uh, the Reconquista. Be because if you speak the English language, it's possible that you don't know a whole lot about the longest war in human history, which was, of course, the reconquest of Spain from the Moors by the Christian Catholic uh, Spaniards. So today I thought um, I wanted to do a Catholic history battle video, and I thought um, I'd pick uh, one from Lerdi Conquista, and the Siege of Sevilla, while it's a siege, and obviously there's battles that take place around the siege, and um, I thought it would be interesting to talk about uh, for a topic in the video. So here we go. Now, uh, you may have heard of Saint Louis the Ninth, King of France. Uh, he was a great crusader king. Uh, he's also obviously a Catholic saint. Um, he was recently in the news because Antifa tried to remove his statue uh, in St. Louis, Missouri. And um, St. Louis was amazing. But one of the things that he is uh, usually not known for is his first cousin, uh, Fernando III, King of Castilla and Leon, who was also a saint in the Catholic Church and is also a crusader. But he, of course, crusaded against the Moors in his homeland of Spain. Now, San Fernando is truly amazing, and his legends are numerous. But one of his greatest feats, or probably his greatest feat in triumph, was the retaking of Sevilla in the south of Spain. So, by the middle of the 1200s, uh, Sevilla had been under the um, control of the Moors for over 500 years. And, of course, they're not going anywhere. The people in the city are all Moorish now and Muslim. Uh, the main uh, religious edifice, if you will, is a mosque. And it was this incredible stronghold for the Muslims. And also, it was a major uh, port city. So the walls are very strong, and it's garrisoned by at least 500 Moorish knights. And the Christians thought it was essentially impregnable. Uh, but the problem the Spanish Catholics had was not necessarily with the garrison itself, but the stronghold at the town of Jaén, about 150 miles northeast of Sevilla. And Jaén was essential for the Catholics uh, if they were going to hope to take Sevilla because there was this very large Muslim garrison there. And in order for the Christians to, to uh, lay siege to Sevilla— uh, they would have, if they tried to bypass Hyen, they would have had a Moorish army sitting in their rear, able to cut off their supplies and then, of course, envelop them. So, in order for them to try and make an attempt on Sevilla, San Fernando and his Castilian army would have to lay siege to Hyen, which they did uh, in 1245, around Christmas time. And he brought with him uh, the Masters of Santiago, or the Order of St. James. It's a famous military order, it's not so famous over here, but Essentially, it's a lot like the Templars. And the, the leader of the Order of St. James was this guy named Paleo Perez Coria. Um, he was a mercenary who actually had a religious conversion and then um, became part of this military order and then rose to the top of it. So they were up against the Muslims at high end, and that was held by um, – the, the Moorish leader was this guy named Muhammad the Red. So Muhammad the Red um, and his garrison at Hayen, they hold the city through the winter of 1245. But then um, after at the end of the winter, they're starving. Uh, they're sick. Uh, they, they haven't obviously been resupplied by anyone because of the Castilian army. And so Muhammad the Red asked for terms from San Fernando. And San Fernando um, essentially says, look, you can keep uh, Granada. And he becomes the master of Granada. And, um, but you have to supply me with money and men for future conquests, and, and in essence, making Muhammad the Red a, a vassal, which is what he was. Now, this kicked the door open for action against Sevilla, but again, Sevilla is this immense stronghold, and San Fernando's army, while it's strong, is not really capable of taking it. But then, in the summer of 1246, the people of Sevilla do something incredibly imprudent, shall we say, stupid. Um, they had this little revolution where they expelled the governor that had been placed there 
uh, by the Moors back in Tunis. And the people of Sevilla had already refused to show Muhammad the Red any kind of homage or any kind of support. So now they're they're left essentially all by themselves. Now they think they're fine. They have a huge garrison there. And a, the most important fact is, again, this is a port city. And Sir, they know that San Fernando doesn't have a navy. So in essence, they, they feel pretty good about their situation. Now, San Fernando realized the position that the Sevillan uh, citizenry had put themselves in. But he also realized that if he attempted to take Sevilla with his army and they failed, it could have cataclysmic repercussions for the Christians of Spain. It could set the Reconquista back hundreds of years. And so he doesn't take the next step lightly, but he does decide to pursue uh, a, a besiegement of Sevilla. But again, he doesn't have a navy. And in order for a siege to actually work against Sevilla, he has to build a navy, which is what he does. It's over 20 ships, I think something like 26 ships, and um, it's built in record time. They sail all the way around the coast of Portugal, all the way down around to the end of Spain. And it's led by uh, this guy, uh, Admiral Ramon Bonifaz. And again, this is the beginning of the Castilian Navy, which obviously takes on world prowess later in the next several hundred years. Um, but at the time, it's a very small, brand new fleet. And immediately, obviously, they're thrown into battle against the Moors, who are protecting uh, the port of Spain. And they, they beat them. And they're able to lay um, a blockade against the port of Sevilla. So now, um, now San Fernando has the ability to actually lay siege to the city with the hopes of actually taking it. And this was a huge deal because not everything's going great at this time, right? The Pope is in the middle of this huge fight with Frederick II, the Holy Roman Emperor, and who's causing all kinds of problems, literally declaring war on the papacy. There's been excommunications. It's, it's a complete disaster in Christendom right now. And the Pope realizes how big of a deal what's going on in the southern part of Spain is to the fact where he allows San Fernando to keep, keep a third of the tithes that normally San Fernando has to pay uh, to the Holy Father. Um, and he's allowed to keep it in order to finance his campaign against Sevilla. So this was a huge deal. Now, um, back to the siege. In order for them to actually take the city, because the city is massive, they have to take the suburbs around the city. And this is where the Order of St. James comes in, and they fight several major battles and are able to push the Moors back into the walls of Sevilla and lay a successful siege. And now the the Moors from Tunis do actually try to break the blockade that had been put in place uh, by Admiral Boniface, and they send a fleet up, but again, they're turned back. So everything looks like it's going well for San Fernando and uh, the Christian army. Um, it, it's important to note here that San Fernando had an immense faith, um, and he had a great devotion to Our Lady, as did Admiral Bonifaz. Um, when Ad Admiral Bonifaz came down with his fleet, on the prow of his ship, he had an image of Our Lady. San Fernando had three chapels built that the army um, was able to utilize that were dedicated to Our Lady. And so they had this deep devotion to Our Lady, and they credit her with the eventual uh, capitulation of Sevilla. So as they go through the summer of 1248, uh, it was apparently record record temperatures in the south of Spain, um, and it it caused a great deal of strife on uh, the Christian the Christian army in San Fernando. But they held on all the way into the fall when uh, the citizens of Sevilla asked for terms of surrender, and San Fernando. Uh, gave his famous um, terms, which were, quote, the whole city liberated and you gone, end quotation. And this was a big deal because from this point on, these were the terms that are given to the Moors. Um, he, he's not going to butcher everybody, but he's going to say, y'all have to get up and you have to leave. And we're going to repopulate this with Christians. Uh, when the uh, Christians entered into the city, they brought a carriage uh, for Our Lady to ride in. And they took it to the, the big mosque in the center of town and they reconsecrated the mosque as a cathedral and they used that carriage as the altar for the cathedral. Uh, three days before Christmas, San Fernando finally got to enter into his newfound city of Sevilla 
and it no longer would ever be a bastion of Muslim power. And it was securely in the hands of the Christian king from then on. Soon after this, uh, the city of Cadiz fell uh, without even putting up a fight at all. And ne the next year, Portugal, actually, the, uh, the complete conquest of Portugal by the Christians was, was completed. Um, the Moors were on the run, but it would take almost another 200 years to finally expel them from Spain. But this was a great moment in the history of Christendom. This gave incredible amounts of solace to many Christians who were very frightened at this time. There were a lot of hardships taking place in Christendom, a lot of frightening things happening. And I think it's important to remember the Siege of Sevilla and remember the power of Our Lady because it's through her intercession to our Lord that when we are against insurmountable odds, we can triumph. Any of it, that's all I have for today. That's a little bit about the Siege of Sevilla. If you want to learn more, um, I would check, I would start with Dr. Warren Carroll's A History of Christendom, and in there on the part on the Siege of Sevilla, there's several really good resources that you can check out if you want to dig deeper into the siege. Uh, I hope everyone's having a Merry Christmas season, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like the video and share it, and subscribe to the channel, and click the bell. Thank you. Merry Christmas.